claws clicking, crawling on scaly bellies and loping through the air on bat-like wings. They're not what they appear. Don't believe their lies. Don't believe your lying eyes. You see a robot? No, 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 no. It's so much more than that. It's beyond good. Beyond evil. It's beyond your wildest imagination. I've never seen Decepticons as monstrous as these Terracons. <laughs> heroes are in for a horrific battle. These horrific Terracon beasts are abominous. Abominous! Half robot, half monster, half bigger robot. And do you know what abominous is spelled backwards? Sunomobia. The Sumerian word for sleepy cake. So, welcome to another uh, live stream. Yeah, this, this is a live stream. Uh, this is going to be the last Transformers live stream that we do on this channel. We're trans uh, we are transferring over to Retrobot, but we'll talk more about that later. Tonight's theme is the Terracons. The Terracons are one of my favorite subgroups from back in the Gen 1 series, and they redid them in Power of the Primes, and there was another version during Transformers Prime that we are going to show also because Monica likes it. <laughs> So, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for seeing our short movie there. Uh, that, that was written and directed by Pixel Kitties. So, um, give yourselves a hooray. Hooray. She, she doesn't want to give herself the cheers. There, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
and uh, and I'm you know what um I don't feel like I need this mustache anymore or um or this tie or these pants uh no so yeah we're going to talk about abominus and you know just so you can see what we're looking at this is our crew for tonight so we have a lot to get through this evening but it's going to be a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to it and uh and now i'm just stalling for time so that i can switch my shirt so yeah here we go here we go there we go. So, uh, we've got a whole bunch of friends here tonight with us. We've seen Joy. Thank you for coming, Joy. Mm. And Kyoji. And Hope. And Nature View. And Jonah. Wouldn't forget about Jonah. <sighs> wow. Oh my gosh. This is delicious. Now, um, I, I, it's going to be hard to pretend here. Uh, it might be from this bottle. Not that I'm advocating adult beverages, but this is Screwball Peanut Butter Kool-Aid. Peanut Butter, um, yeah, that, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it is, it's booze. Um, I, I, <laughs> I mean, no, it's not. It might be something else. Uh, this is delicious, by the way. Uh, I, I don't know who makes this, but it's amazing. And it really does taste like peanut butter, except then it's followed by happy feelings. Oh, oh my gosh. You would not think that that something that tastes like peanut butter uh, as a drink would taste that good, but it really is. And, you know, since we've got the music going, why don't we go ahead and show tonight's secret word. So, anytime you hear this, then I will imbibe. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So, uh, without any further ado, let's get this this party started. We are going to start with the Gen 1 favorites. And so, we're going to start right here with Hungar. Or Hunger. Or however you say his name. Um... Hunger is, of course, the leader of the Terracons, and uh, you know you can see him here with the uh, with the chest plate being used as a shield. I I, I always kind of liked that. You know they they put one of these uh, these pegs that's the same size as everybody else's heads, so that they can take advantage of the combiner port right here or on this side. And then you just plug it in, and boom, and it fits nice. And then, you know, you've got Abominus's gun, which is also his gun. This is a nice figure. Uh, I, I always really liked him. He looks good. Of course, as a Gen 1 character, he, uh, oh, oh, hope, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't come any stronger, just so that you know. <laughs> um... Oh, that's in response to the Bloody Mary. Okay, okay. I'm I, I'm keeping up with what you're throwing down. Uh, just not very well. Anyway, as a Gen 1 character, Hungar is, uh, is not super poseable. You do have... Actually, he's more poseable than most. You have knee joints, and you have hip joints. And, you know, they probably could have gotten away without doing that. 
and you've got a shoulder joint and you've got elbow joints. You do not have uh, shoulders coming out to the sides. I mean, G Gen 1 characters, <laughs> they didn't do that sort of thing. They didn't do that sort of thing. And, uh, and this is his robot mode. And before I transform him, I I'm just going to throw out my general criticism of the Scramble City combiners. And for those who don't know, in Japan, uh, there was a video done that kind of bridged the gap between the second season of the Transformers where they were on Earth and, you know, things were pretty much as they were in the first season, except that a whole bunch of new characters showed up with no explanation. And so uh, then you had Transformers the movie that goes from, from being modern day of 1986 to the distant future of 2005. And so uh, in Japan, they created a direct-to-video, uh, I guess it was a movie, called Scramble City. And that was intended to bridge the gap in between the, uh, the, the season and the Transformers movie. And it focused very heavily on combiners like these, like Superion and, and Defensor and Combaticons and Stunicons and, and all of them. And so... Um, these, these style combiners have since been dubbed Scramble City Combiners. Um, the Terracons were released in 1987, so they, uh, they of course, uh, did not appear in the Transformers the movie, and so I don't think that they would have, uh, been in Scramble City either, I'm not sure. But uh, I haven't actually seen Trans uh, Scramble City yet. Uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit harder to get a hold of. But uh, they are still done in that same style. They are still compatible with all the other combiners of that series. And so they are still considered Scramble City combiners. So, uh, you, you have Hungar here. And let's just show him next to his teammates. And, uh, you know, I've got my carefully set up scene here, and we're going to kind of ruin it just for a moment. Uh, so we have Hungar. All right. Th there he is. And then let's put him next to Blot and next to Sinner Twin and next to uh, Ripper Snapper and, um, and oh, uh, some. Okay. Yes, yes. And, and some of these guys. So um, when I talk about Scramble City combiners, um, there's, there's a few things that are hallmarks of Scramble City combiners. For one thing, every Scramble City combiner uh, limb, let's just call them a limb, limb characters. You, know, you have a, a body character that's going to be this size, and then you're going to have limb characters that are this size. And that always bugged me as a kid, that they are so tiny. And, I, you know, I, it, when you get them into beast modes, it works a little bit better because he's down on all fours. But when they're standing in robot mode, they really seem like they're not even in the same world. Also, all of the, the limb pieces have these little box heads. And that is to facilitate them combining. So what would happen is you have these guys, uh, you know, transform into a limb, and then the head folds down, and it just here. Let me get let me get him transformed here. So you know, you'd have a limb that sort of is transformed like that, and then it plugs into this socket. And that holds it securely and allows it to rotate, but it it does make for some uh, some pretty awkward looking robots. Uh, you know, you can see he's got a very very tiny face. You know, the scale on these things is absurd. But 
the the idea, and this was something that was featured in the Scramble City uh, movie, but not really featured in the in the American cartoon, is that all of the limbs could were compatible with any body, and they could be any limb. And uh, limb is a little bit of a stretch, you know. Usually, it means just uh, either folding them up to where they've got their head sticking out and then sticking in a fist or a foot. And that's another uh, hallmark of the Scramble City combiners is they had feet that were essentially just a little plate with a peg on it. And then in foot mode, you know, the, the transformer would be like that. Or, you know, you'd, you'd pull them out at the waist and you'd stick on a fist and now, now this guy is, wait here, uh, I keep putting his gun in his hand and he doesn't transform with his gun in his hand. And so you kind of fold the, the legs out of the way and, you know, there wasn't really any thought given to what to do with the extra appendages, but you stick the fist in and fist makes it into an, an arm. And so you could mix and match these characters, even though in the American cartoon, they never did. There's not a single time that I can remember that any of the combiner characters ever swapped. Yeah, you know, they just they just didn't do it. So, and yes, uh, Kyoji, tiny freaking heads. Yes. Um, so... Uh, so, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, and, you know, Kyoji makes a good point about Streetwise. Uh, he had a dedicated combiner peg, so he, he could cheat a little bit. So, see, Kyoji, you know, you, once again, Kyoji... <laughs> It's, it's like drinking a Reese cup. That's what it tastes like. It's like drinking a Reese cup. And let me tell you, in case you've never drank a Reese cup, it's delicious. Now I want to warm up a Reese cup, just melt it, and ooh, I would probably vomit, but you know, I would probably be just as happy with it coming up as I was with it going down. Oh, hell no. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. So, uh, so yes, anyway, um, this, oh, I, I am sorry, Jonah. I hate to tell you this. This is cutthroat. Yes, Dive Bomb is a Predacon. He is, uh, from Predaking, and we will talk about Predaking in a future episode that we do have planned. So, uh, yes, you will get your fill of Dive Bomb, but yes, this character is cutthroat. So, anyway, uh, so we have, we have Hunger, it's like H U N dash G R R or something like that. And so to transform him, the transforms are not difficult on these guys. You fold in the fists, just like that. You take the gun and the shield off. You know, I guess I can start there. So now I fold in the fist and you see they, now with these guys, they actually put, uh, you know, I feel like they put some extra points in here that they, that they, could have got away with not doing, you know, they could have had him to where he just had a fused monster foot and then the, uh, the fist folds out, but they did not. They actually have the toe of the monster foot fold up when he's in robot mode, which is cool. Um, and that was at a time when a lot of the toys were really, really getting very, very cheap. So I appreciate every extra detail that they put into this guy. Uh, you know, you point the toes and that makes for the dragon heads. And then you have the tail on the back and it just closes over top of the head. And then, then we have the feet that come out from the back and then go on the side and then you put them down. And then you rotate what have become the back monster legs and position them so that it can sit 
And see, this is what's really cool about this guy. He's got a lot of points of articulation in his legs. And I don't think that they have to be there, but they put them there and it makes him so much more fun to play with. I, I wish that his mouth's, his mouth's opened. Okay, that would be really cool, but uh, but I have to say that just being able to do this and you know spread them out, it really makes this beast mode look great. I, this is the way. This is the way. This this, this is, is the, the way. way. This is the way. Although you know, with opening mouths. So so yeah. Um, this is. I love this toy, and then they've got five millimeter holes that can receive the the gun, and you can even plug the shield in, and and that's one thing that I really appreciate in in any Transformers toy. If you're gonna have extra pieces, then make sure that you can use those extra pieces in whatever the modes are. I I don't like extra pieces that just sit off to the side waiting to get lost. And that's one of the things that I really never liked about the fists and the feet. You know, they're, uh, you know, I think that everybody did this. They would put the fist into the foot and then say, okay, that's like maybe a little tank or something. But, you know, um, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything except be an extra piece and that's that's very disappointing and uh and in in subsequent years transformers tried many many different strategies to deal with that problem and i feel like they probably answered it best in combiner wars uh, with power of the primes they had prime armor and we will we will get to that uh, and that, that had an integrated gimmick, which wasn't bad, but I feel like the most effective was, was when they just did Combiner Wars and they had the, the hand that had the molded fingers which folded out and then there was a post and then there was kind of a heel that would also transform into a thumb so that it could create a pretty good hand or a kind of crappy foot. So, yeah. Um, but nonetheless, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kyoji is showing showing everybody all the different ways that you could do hunger, hunger, hunger. You know, his... Yeah. Um, hunger. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's, that's hunger. Oh gosh, I will not be able to do that ever again on demand. That that, 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 was, that was as good as it's going to get. So that's Hungar, and uh, we're just going to set him aside for the moment. And since we got out Cutthroat, let's go ahead and take a look at Cutthroat. Uh, this is his robot mode, and you know it's. Let's face it. The Scramble Cities combine the Scramble City Combiners had crappy ass robot modes. I'm sorry, Cutthroat. I mean, as a Scramble City Combiner, your robot mode is better than some, but it's little. There's virtually no posability. You've got you've got a pivot point on the arm. Uh, that that's it. Y you know it's. I like the bird head in the chest. The arms aren't even long enough to reach past the chest. Uh, the head is dinky. The the kibble, you know, there, there's nothing. There's no effort put into making the legs do anything other than just hang out the back. And his wings stick out. They don't fold up. Uh, I'm sorry, but Cutthroat, uh, you know the. The, the robot mode on Cutthroat is just, it's just not that great. Um, oh, oh, I didn't realize apparently today is National Tequila Day. So we, we have some, spe I, we weren't planning this, but we just happened to have Cabo Wabo 
Um, okay, if, if you're below 21, pl please, please walk away from the screen for a moment. Um, so, oh, okay, so we will, we will do, uh, some Cabo Wabo. There we go. And uh, I have a skull-sized shot of, of Cabo, and I guess I'm just going to do it. Do, do I just do it? Okay, National Tequila Day, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what were we talking about? I have no idea. Uh, no, we were talking about Cutthroat and his piss poor robot mode. But let's let let let's just be honest. These are the Terracons. We don't give a shit about their robot modes. We care about their beast modes. That's that's where all the play value is. You have them in beast mode. Yes, they can turn into robots, and so every now and then you have them turn into a robot. But you know, just because they can. But oh, oh, he he also has a, a little gun. So there's his little gun. Um, but really, cutthroat. We don't care about your robot mode. So. We want them in beast mode. And uh, once again, the transform is not difficult. We're going to straighten the arms out. We're going to fold the wings down, and that's going to fold the, the arms into the side. We are going to fold the head up and cover the little peg robot head. We're going to collapse the body, just like that. Bring the legs forward. And then we can take the gun and just put it onto this little hole in the back and uh, press it in there. And now you can even, and you know, this is a guy that you can actually do that with. You know, you can actually transform him in, in that fast. And so he, uh, you know, his bird mode is actually pretty great, okay? I love the bird mode. He, you know, the wings have a lot of detail on them. He's, you know, he's got a great chicken head, um, you know, but an angry chicken head. Uh, he's, you know, let's, let's go to the other camera and see if we can get this in focus. So this is, yeah, look at that. Okay. His, his head looks great. Uh, the wings look great. You know, his colors are nice. And, and, and this is something that I guess because of the, uh, the play feature where they intended for all of these characters to be able to interchange with any of the other combiners, they, uh, they had them in randomized color schemes. You know, they, they weren't too concerned with team cohesion like they were with the Constructicons, but that was something that always bothered me as a kid. You know, why do they have to have, you know, all these different colors when they're a team? You know, the Insecticons look cool because they're all similar yet different. The Dinobots are similar yet different. The Predacons, the Constructicons, all of these teams that have matching color schemes look great. And then with all of the Scramble City guys... They kind of... But, that being said, if you're going to have colors that are... Then I have to say that his colors really do look good. Uh, and, you know, even after 35, 6, 7, 6, 37 years, uh, he, he still looks great. And, you know, that, that's a testament to him. Uh, you know, he, and this is the, you know, this is the mode that I would have him in if he wasn't combined. 
you know, if he wasn't abominous, then he was going to be in, in kind of, he's kind of a vulture type thing. I think that he's more of a vulture than a chicken. So, you know, um, and, you know, I also like that you can position the wings up like this, you know, that, that really helps the dynamics. You can, you know, bring the, the feet forward and have them in kind of a, a swooping dive bomb kind of position. He's not dive bomb, but anyway, so, uh... Oh, Kyoji says 33 years. Thank you, Kyoji, for doing math because I, 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 I did not. I did not do the math. So, uh, 33 years, uh, still looking pretty good after 33 years. So, we're going to set, and I also like that the head is positionable. So, depending on how you have the body positioned, you can have his head uh, staring forward. And so... You know, we can kind of prop him upright, and he's still staring forward, and he looks great. He really does. You know, I, I, I really like this guy, and uh, even if he has kind of a, a, a substandard robot mode, I don't care, because he's an awesome bird. So, let us move on to Sinner Twin. Sinner Twin. Sinner Twin, another one with colors that look fantastic. Um, now, I would gladly sacrifice this color scheme to have an Abominus that is grays, purples, silvers, and blacks. But uh, if, you know, or, or maybe grays and tans and silver. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what my... my default abominus would look like but i don't think that it would be yellow and green uh or yellow and teal uh but that being said if it, without that he he does really look good his colors look good uh yeah you know, now this is the extra gun that comes with him uh but you know it doesn't fit into the small robot fist hand and so there's nothing to do with it when you turn it into a robot. So I always just kind of left it on his back and then that kept me from being able to transform the head, uh, the, the twin heads all the way. But you know, it's fine because once again, robot mode is, uh, you know, he's, uh, he got little, little tiny, little tiny arms, little, little tiny arms. Yeah, you know, he can hold a gun. Pew, pew. So, you know, um, he 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 looks he looks like that uh, little tiny peg head uh, no posability you know just he 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 is what he is but he he does for what he is he he looks okay uh, and of course there's the beast mode we want the beast mode that that's what we want now there isn't a place for the pistol in the beast mode so I just leave it in his hand and rotate it forward. And then you take the pair of heads. They are one molded piece. Well, they're they're actually two pieces screwed together, but there's there's no articulation there. So you fold those over to cover the head. You rotate the beast legs. Actually, you need to get this out of the way. Rotate the beast legs forward first, then cover the head with the beast heads. Collapse the body rotate the beast legs down in the back flip the tail down and yeah you see once again for robot mode you're just kind of flipping the kibble out of the way but it it doesn't you know it, it's it's just okay i'm gonna put the arms you know the legs of the beast mode and the heads of the beast mode and the tails of the beast mode behind him they aren't disguised. They don't become an integral part of the transform. They are just kibble that sticks out in his back and you just pretend that it's not there. So, so yeah, let's uh, rotate these things back and rotate that back and put his legs and head down. And then we can rotate this gun forward. And now look at that. Okay, that is cool. He looks great. You know, the, the big gun, even the little gun from underneath, 
Uh, I, I, I really wish that these things were posable. At least they're molded with the mouths open and snarling. But, uh, yeah, he looks awesome. And, uh, and this is, once again, this is how you have him if he is not combined with Abominus. He, he just looks fantastic. And, uh, and he makes, you know, the fact that you can move all of the appendages. Yes, they don't have any additional articulation, but, you know, you can get them into different poses and sort of do this. No, what's this for? What's this for? I didn't do anything bad. I didn't do anything bad. Okay, wait. Internet. Internet. You t tell Monica that I did not do anything bad. I said you know too much. Okay. So. I did, just so that you know. She doesn't tell me what she's getting to put into these black boxes. It is a surprise every single time. And and never a good one. I have never once had a good surprise in the black box. Oh. Well, it's it's not bugs. So, um it's a bag of black licorice. Anybody who has watched DuckTales knows that black licorice is the best flavor. <laughs> Wily Wallaby, soft and chewy, Sus made with sustainable palm oil. How, how, is, how is that a selling point? M made with sustainable palm oil. Oh, hell no. I have to do this. This is my dedication. Uh, oh. All right. Now, I have eaten bugs on this channel. So... This, this can't be as bad as bugs. So I'm, I'm going to do this right. I've got pretty much as much as I can fit in my mouth. Here we go. We're going to do this. Black, uh, joy, you love black licorice? And you're admitting that? Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Why do I lose so much? This is horrible! <laughs> um, it tastes like black licorice! <laughs> because it is! Oh, uh, what? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Ah. Uh, oh. The flavor gets up in your sinuses. It, it's going up through the roof of my mouth. Mmm. Oh. Okay. Um. No. I said you know too much. And you know what? That would. That would bother me too. Um. Cheeky Cheeky Boy is here! Thank you, Cheeky Cheeky Boy! That means that I get to take a drink, but I have to wait for just a second. Because I just took a big mouthful of black licorice. Uh, awful! Mmm. Oh, well. Okay, hold on. We're almost there. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I was overconfident because it wasn't a bug. But you know what? I've actually learned to really like the grasshoppers. So much so that after the last jar that I finished, we ordered a big jar because I'm going to it through them too fast. And here's how bad this is. Okay, let me just put this in perspective. We're almost there. We're almost there. I am going to eat some grasshoppers as a palate cleanser to get rid of the taste of black licorice. Oh. Boy, that really sticks to the tongue, doesn't it? Oh. Well, mm, I know I keep saying this, but we're almost there. Got very little left in my mouth. All right. Oh. Um, right here. Ah, okay. Um, oh, I, I lost. Oh, wait, there it is. Okay. Lost a grasshopper. So, yeah, I got, I got a, a, a couple little grasshoppers right here. And can the camera focus in that tight? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, there we go. A couple little grasshoppers. And... I, I keep dropping one. Oh, there it is. Yeah. This is some fucked up repugnant shit. That's better. That is better. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I gotta work the grasshopper around to get rid of the black licorice. Wait a minute. Okay. And now, this is for Cheeky Cheeky Boy. <laughs> well, I have just had black licorice, grasshoppers, and peanut butter flavored whiskey. Those are three great tastes that do not go great together. Um, watch out for, watch out for those you knows, cause she has another black box. Okay, well, uh, I'm glad that we all enjoyed this live stream about the Terracons. See you next week, everybody. We're, 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 oh, no, we're not. We're not done. We're not done. Okay, so, uh, anyway, back to Sinner Twin in his, in his beast form. He does look awesome. I am going to set him aside, and we are going to go to... Ripper Snapper! Look at Ripper Snapper! He, in his robot mode, looks... absurd. He, he looks absurd. I mean, you know, look at him from the front. He's, he's... He's everything that you'd expect from a Scramble City combiner character. Um, he, I'm, I'm trying to get the camera to focus in on him, and I... There, I think that we're, we're good. Okay. Um, and, but you know, he's, oh, I just said it again. Um, he, he has just a ridiculous amount of black kibble. You know, that's the white counter. You know, I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that. Just, and I said it again. You know! It's my catchphrase. I've decided that that the thing that's 
starts with Y-A and ends in K-N-O-W is my catchphrase. No? No, it's not? Okay. So, anyway, yeah, his, his, uh, it, it's once again, you just move the, uh, you move the limbs of the creature mode towards the back, you flip the head and the tail out of the way, and then he, you've got a robot that, that looks like this, and, um, and he's got a little pistol. They all had little pistols, that's nice. And then once again, I would transform him by putting the pistol forward, putting his arms down, collapsing the body. I take this little extra gun piece out and then flip the head over like that and then put the tail down like that and then put his, his limbs in a forward facing position. And then I can take his gun and put it on his back and that gives him a shark fin. I'll be honest, for years I didn't realize that this guy was supposed to be a land shark. I had no idea. I didn't know what the hell he was. Uh, you know, he had, he, he's got teeth and he's got a pointy face and I like the curve of the body, but it never occurred to me that this is a shark fin and that this is a shark tail. I just, I didn't know what the hell he was. Uh, you know, he, he kind of went, and, um, and, and I'll be honest, uh, he was probably my least favorite Terracon. I'm sorry. So, yeah, um, he's, now that I know that he's a land shark, okay, I, I, I get it. He's not a very good land shark. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, the, the, <sighs> I'm not allowed to say that. So, the, the fact that the forward hand things you can't really make out claws they're just kind of in this cupped position so he's just kind of eh, eh. I, I i'm not feeling it I, i'm not feeling it um he is definitely a creature and his creature mode is definitely better than his robot mode and i do like the general shape you know he's kind of egg shaped but i feel like having a a a cute, appealing egg shape is not the effect that you want from your monster transformer called a terror con. So, yeah, uh, I... Oh, oh, no, 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 you're good, you're good. So, uh, I'm, I'm getting messages from God. Uh, so, so, yeah, Sinner Twin never really meant a lot to me other than his position in the group of Terracons because I love the Terracons. Let me just tell you, this subgroup is one of my favorite subgroups in all of Transformers. I loved this toy. I think partially because this is one of the few combiner toys that I got firsthand. Uh, the rest of them, you know, most of the rest of them I got secondhand, but I bought these guys on my own and I had them in pristine condition. Uh, it, it was after the fire, so they looked great. And, and you can see that he's got some yellowing, which is a shame, but now I've got the newer ones and that makes me very happy. So we will set him aside and I've been saving the best for last. I... This is Blot. Ah, oh, Blot. Blot! He's my boy. <laughs> so, if you read the bio on Blot, it says that his joints leak a foul-smelling lubricant. And when I was a kid, I thought, well, that's, that's kind of absurd. Let me tell you something. 
If any of you have ever had to work on the differential of a truck, or yeah, I guess the differential of a car is probably the same deal. Uh, if you have a vehicle with re rear wheel drive, then it will have a differential. And that differential will have this fluid in it called gear oil. Gear oil is the most putrid, foul smelling stuff that you have ever smelt in your life. This if, is some fucked up repugnant shit. It is. It is. If if I were to try and lubricate my truck with my own feces, it would smell better than gear oil. Fortunately, it's one of those things that for the most part you do not need to service often. You put it in, it stays contained in the differential. Unless you have a leak, you don't need to to change it often like you do with your motor oil uh, it doesn't mean never change your gear oil it just means that chances are you won't <laughs> so i mean that that's the reality uh on my last truck brutus the 2000 dodge dakota the uh the differential went and i had to replace it and that was a job it, it was a job it took me probably what a month about, about six weeks to to change the differential because I didn't know what I was doing but I figured it out and I got all the 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 gears to align correctly and then I had to put in fresh new gear oil and let me tell you the fact that it's fresh and new doesn't make it smell better so uh, somebody when writing well I guess it probably was Bob Budiansky when Bob Budiansky was writing the uh, the profile on Blot, I just wonder if he realized that he was technically accurate, that there are lubricants that are very foul-smelling. And so, nonetheless, Blot was a stinky, disgusting Decepticon. That was his whole shtick. The other Terracons didn't want to combine with him because he smelled so bad and he always had this ooze coming out of his joints. That is disgusting! And it is disgusting. Now, this is not something that I remember ever playing out in the Marvel comic. I don't remember them ever incorporating it into the show. But nonetheless, it was in his bio, and I always thought that was great. So, um, you know, and I'm going to say this. In robot... Damn. In robot mode, his, his kibble is at least disguised a little bit better. Yes, he has these big gorilla arm things just going down his back, and he has his robot leg, or his beast legs, just kind of folded up behind. Yeah, they're not even folded up, they're just facing backwards. But, because, did I say it again? Holy crap. Uh, I need to stop that. Can't help it. It's a lifelong bad habit. So, so the fact that they're all kind of uniform and they don't stick out in odd directions, I like that a lot better. Uh, I think it makes it a lot more appealing in his robot mode. Uh, he's, he's a little bit huskier than the other Terracons, and you can take this piece off, and you can really get to see that, you know, he's still got dinky arms that can't reach past his chest. He's still not poseable at all. He still has a peg head. But other than that, uh, I would say that for a Scramble City limb, he is probably one of the better Scramble City characters in robot mode. And let's go ahead and go to the beast mode. So uh, once again, I'm just... Actually, I'm taking the gun off this time because they they actually made a place for the robot pistol in beast mode. So you put his arms down by his sides and you flip the legs down like that. You compress the body and then... Oh, actually, before you compress the body, you're going to fold the head down and put it down his back 
and then compress the body and that's going to completely hide the head which is nice because a lot of them if you look on the underside of the vehicle it's like hey there uh, uh, i've got a robot head uh, i've got a robot head on the underside and you just have to ignore it so so i like that he's does... tired of staring at this guy's butt that's not his butt just saying not his butt you made me eat black licorice you forced me to cram three giant pieces into my mouth you guys remember that, right? No? I'm making up animals. Um, so, anyway, so you have it like this. It's compressed, and then you take the arms, you swing them out, and then you collapse them around the front. And now you've got these gorilla arm things that are actually pretty poseable because you've got the shoulder joint here, You've got the elbow joint, and then because of the way it transforms, you can also have them go out to the sides. So there's a lot of play value to this guy, and you can angle the, the head forward, and he is just cool. Of all of the Terracons, this is my favorite. I love Blot. I love Blot, and this is why, because he turns into this. Now... Now they didn't they they didn't uh, forget about the weapons. So you got this thing. This plugs into the back, and then you have the gun, and it's got this little tiny hole in the side, and that allows you to combine it with that back piece, and it makes a backpack cannon or a backpack gun. The only downside of that is that with the backpack on, you can't really position the head. And, and that kind of hurts it because now he has to be in kind of in a more upright pose. Uh, you can lean him forward a little bit, but uh, but nonetheless, that is a great creature mode. I don't know what he is. He's some so, some kind of primate sort of, but you know I just imagine him leaping. she's counting every time i say the the thing so so i would always imagine him just leaping into battle and and attacking his enemies and and going ape shit no i didn't say it so uh and and dripping foul smelling fluid so i love blot I love Blot, and this character alone makes the whole set worth having. And so, when you put them together into their various beast modes, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna set them up here on the uh, on the other table. Maybe I can. Maybe. Uh, let's put him like that and him like that. And we'll put Hungar in the middle. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'll switch to the other view. So we've got Hungar here. We've got Sinner Twin. We've got Blot. We've got Ripper Snapper. Uh, let, let's put Ripper Snapper on his little pedestal there. We've got Cutthroat. I'm going to put Cutthroat. Oh, oh, I'm knocking things over. So we're going to put Cutthroat up on this little pedestal. And... Maybe we'll lean them forward a little bit. There we go. Maybe. Come on, cutthroat. Don't fight with me. And then we'll take Sinner Twin and put him right here. And and see, here's the thing that, that I'm going to say is when you have these guys all transformed, the scale isn't so bad. You know, yeah, Hungar... Hungar still is much larger than the others, but they uh, they kind of work together as a team a lot more cohesively. So so I love these guys in their in their animal modes. I love to just have them transformed together. Uh, in their animal modes or their creature modes and you know you can see them Son of a... I'm never gonna break this habit 
and this is not going to help me break this habit. Just saying, you're not helping anyone. I don't want to open the box. I don't want to open the box. Oh, come on. Oh, really? Okay, so... Pixel created her own oxy chew. Those of you who are fans of DuckTales will remember oxy chew, the gum that creates oxygen for you as you chew and keeps you alive and apparently lasts forever and is in the best flavor black licorice so yeah it's black licorice the best flavor oh gosh and so we have like individually wrapped oxy chew and, and let me just show you this because this is yeah part of this is actually pretty cool the gum is not cool um so we, we've got these things, there's little stickers on them so that it is possible to unwrap the gum without tearing the label. And when you unwrap the gum, you have a Della Duck comic, which most of them are really bleak. Do you have these posted online anywhere? Uh, because they're hilarious and dark. Uh, let's see, this one we have, uh, okay, I'm gonna go to the other cam. So that maybe we can we can get this to uh, to focus in maybe, or I'll just read it to you. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna try it there. I think I'm getting it focused. So she's saying, "Let me tell you about the worst part of being stranded alone on the moon. It's this." Wait, wait, okay, I'm an old person. So, uh, I've gotten to that age where I can't see close up anymore. And before the world shut down, I had an appointment to the eye doctor and they were probably going to give me bifocals. Yeah, uh, not looking forward to it. But then everything went crazy go nuts and they haven't opened the, the eye doctor's office back up yet. So I built these out of a pair of my glasses and a uh, and some reading glasses that uh, that I got at the dollar store uh, I actually merged two pairs of reading glasses together to get the appropriate magnifications for each eye <sighs> got a little bit of cat hair on there and so these are my homemade bifocals and they do actually work so uh, let's see so let, let's go to the other screen so let me tell you about the worst part of being stranded alone on the moon. It's the vast emptiness, the lonely contemplation of your utter smallness in the face of chaos. It's the terror of being alone with yourself and your, your regrets. Seriously, seriously though, it's definitely the moon sharks. There's a moon shark there. There. There's a moon shark. So, every every piece of Oxy Chew has a different Della Duck comic. I think there were like diff eight, nine, nine different Della Duck. Ten. Ten different Della Duck comics. So, uh, and we, we had these at conventions. So, now I have to put this in my mouth and chew on it until the flavor is gone. Oh, flavor's kicking in. Well, is it bad that if it were grasshopper flavored, I'd be happier? So, yeah, now, now I've got that happening for the foreseeable future. <sighs> okay, 
So, we have the Terracons as a subgroup. Let's form Abominus. So, yeah, I got, I still got, yeah, I got that. Mm, that is a flavor that's hard to ignore. I'm gonna try to ignore it. All you can do is chew it and, and swallow the juices that your mouth creates because you're chewing it. I don't want my mouth to create juices because juices mean more flavor. Yeah, so, thank you for that. All right, so, let's go ahead and form Abominus. Form feet and legs. Form arm and body. Wait a minute, you know, uh, I, I guess we should transform the guys before. We're ready to form Voltron. Activate interlock. Dynatherms connected. Infracells up. Mega thrusters are go. Go Voltron Force! Well, in the time that it took for Voltron to completely form and have every sound effect that they had available to them play, I have transformed Blot and added a foot. So, we've got Blot here, and he makes a foot. And then uh, I, I want to say that I, ha I would have uh, Cutthroat as another foot because he, he actually makes a very bad arm. So... You know the wings that the the wings don't don't transform well for for armness. So, and normally I would have the the skinnier bird guy as an arm because you know skinny bird guy he should be an arm, but but uh, cutthroat doesn't work well as an arm. So, you know we'll we'll make him a leg. And oh oh wait. Uh, I, I almost forgot. I, I, I like to attach their weapons when they're when they're combining, so that you know I don't. Oh, just stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop! It. So that you don't lose them. I used to like you, and uh, I, I, I'm not not even sure what to do with the backpack thing. I I can stick it on his back, maybe. There, there we go. So, so, Blot is a leg, and uh, and then that means that Sinner Twin is going to be an arm, and he makes a good arm because he's got this this obvious arm cannon thing, and you can even have the cannon going between the tail, so that's nice. We're going to expand the body. Uh, of course, you just kind of fold the legs out of the way as much as you can. I didn't say it. <laughs> and there we go. And we're going to flip the head down. The uh, the gun kind of gets in the way, but I, I, I actually what I'll do is I take the gun and I put it on Cutthroat because it's pretty much the same color pretty close to the same color so I'll just do that or maybe do this eh, you know there we go so yeah take Sinner Twins pistol give it to Cutthroat <coughs> uh, give give him a fist so there we go he is now an arm and then we take Ripper Snapper, and you can't have the uh, the head down because it gets in the way of the shoulder when you when you try to merge it with hunger. Flip the legs up. Uh, just bring these things down. Yeah, I I've never really settled on a definitive way to to make the legs not look quite like legs but there you go and then we will give him a, a fist so he is now like that and then we got hunger Arnold 
I am armored as a two-headed dragon. I'm going to go and I'm going to merge with other creatures. Maybe. Okay, I've had enough of this. Can, can I stop? Can I stop? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. So, uh, so for the shield thing, you flip in this little thing, and then there are two posts here. They engage these two holes here, and then you just add it there. And see, here's another thing about Scramble City combiners. You just about always, not completely always, but almost always, had to add a head. Only in the case of Defensor did you not have to add the head. And that's why Def Defensor was also one of my favorite combiners. Because, you know, you didn't have to add... You didn't have to, ha to add a head. So, I feel like that was an appropriate use of the, of the term. So, now, form, feet, and legs. Maybe if I can get this to line up. Form, arms, and body. And hunger will form the head. And there you go. This is abominous. And as Gen 1 combiners go, he looks pretty good. Now, I never really understood why they felt like having such a large head was better. Uh, they did the same thing with Power Master Prime, where they gave these super robots a much larger than proportion head, as though that makes it seem like the robot itself is bigger and more intimidating, and it doesn't. It does not. I heard a click. Okay. Yeah, you put that thing down. So, so this is Abominus. Let's go to the other camera view so that we can see him in all of his glory. Uh, and we'll, yeah. So that, that is Abominus. And he really does look good. Uh, as, you know, as Gen 1 combiners go, I did not say it. Stop it! So, as Gen 1 combiners go, he looks really nice. Uh, and you notice that I've got, um, oh, now I'm, you, you got me thrown off, uh, Cindersaur here, who is not a Terracon. He is a Firecon. Oh, Hope's leaving! Aww. So, Hope, this one's for you. Thank you for showing up. That's for you, Hope. All right. Back to Abominus. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, you will see that we've got Cindersaur here. And Cindersaur is another uh, ladder wave Decepticon. He was a Firecon, one of three. There was Cindersaur, Flame Feather, and the other one. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a, a magenta bug, and uh, and his name is escaping me. Uh, it might be Sparkstalker. I think it might have been Sparkstalker. But uh, now, these guys are ridiculous looking. I I'm going to own it. These guys... Team Girl Squad! Cheerleader! Yeah. So-and-so! Watch your face! Team Obi-Wan! So, uh, yeah, uh, Cindersaur was one of three guys that all had the same general look to them. Let's, let's, let's show it on the other cam and maybe I can get it to, to focus a little bit better. Yeah, so, so, uh, I always thought these guys were cute. 
they're they're absurd and they're not good but i i always kind of liked the the stubby look of them and and the fact that they were all very you know very much very similar they all had creature modes and uh the autobot equivalent was the uh the spark abots uh, that's a weak name uh i would call them sparkle bots just because it's such a weak name but to transform these guys you just flip the the arms in front of the face which doesn't even really disguise the face all that well and then you bend the legs forward um or actually you bend the legs forward this way and then you flip the tail out and they all have the exact same transform and, and then see if you have the head like this then you can't see the face so much but uh but you know he's he's sort of bent over like this and then ideally what you would do is you would kind of move the limbs out of the way and you see this roller here he uh you're supposed to be able to roll him across a table and he makes sparks now uh he he does look a little bit like a pill bug uh a, a little bit but you know pill bugs usually don't have a horn i'm a little deceived so, uh, my, unfortunately, I got this guy <clears throat> before the fire that happened at my house. And then after the fire, all of my transformers were stained with thick layers of smoke stains. And at the time, I thought that maybe I could get the smoke stains off by soaking them in bleach water. And what that did was it corroded every metal part. It ruined the stickers uh, and it, it kind of destroyed the sparking thing inside him. So he no longer sparks. Just going to say that the company that was that was in charge of our account, uh, Service Master, they still exist. Uh, they, they said they would clean our stuff. They did not clean our stuff. And I realized that that was when I was in ninth grade. That would have been 1992, I think. 92, maybe? Uh, or 91, maybe 91. Uh, so at this point, it's been almost 30 years since that happened. And you know what? Screw you, service master. You suck. Still don't like them. Uh, yeah, the uh, the guy that was in charge of our account did nothing. He did nothing. Lost half of our stuff. Nothing came back clean. He hit on my sister, and then they then they fired him. But they didn't get our stuff back, and they didn't clean our stuff. Yeah, you know, we we probably would have had a good lawsuit on our hands, uh, but by the time that that was all done and i get it now as an adult when i was a kid it's like yeah you should sue him but you know as as an adult it's like after going through everything all of the legal things and all of the insurance things and having the house rebuilt and everything um my my parents just didn't want another battle and, and my I, spirit wants justice um you know what i i, I want justice but nonetheless it's it's a little bit late so, um, so this is Cindersaur as a creature, and he is some kind of dragon monster. Uh, I like him. You know, I like the creature. It's cute. And I realize that cute isn't something that we really look for in a Decepticon, but uh, he, he is a cute Decepticon. And I, and I like the creature mode. And I even like the robot mode, even though it's stupid. Uh, I'm just going to own it and say that I, I love this guy. I love all three of the fire cons. Sparkabots, not as much, but I got them. Uh, they were cheap. You know, lots of things were cheap then. So, so, stop it. Stop it! So, you might be wondering why I'm showing you Cindersaur. Well, when Power of the Primes came out, they released 
a new Autobot as a Legends class figure. It was Slash, the first time that they created a toy for a female Autobot that was a Dinobot. And she turned into a Raptor. And then they recolored her as Cindersaur. And even though he's not an official member of the Terracons, I feel like since since they made Slash a Dinobot, even though Slash officially doesn't combine with the other Power of the Primes Dinobots, that Cindersaur obviously was intended to go along with the Terracons. Now, here's another little thing. As a new Legends class figure in Power of the Primes, ideally, the, the he, he, she should have t had a, uh, like a weapon mode or something like that. Well, I'm not sure. Actually, as Power of the Primes, I don't know if their Legend class figures did that because they weren't focusing on the Combiners as much. I know that in Combiner Wars, every Legends class figure at least supposedly was supposed to have a weapon mode that would that would that could be used with the Combiner. Uh, so Slash and Cindersaur here do not have a weapon mode and, uh, and they don't have any kind of official combined mode. But that doesn't mean that you can't combine them if you're not creative. So uh, Cindersaur is a he. Uh, even though the figure that he is based off of is a she. And we're just going to transform him really quick. Uh, you flip around the legs. You flip the tail to cover the head. You pull the raptor head out of the back and then close the little door. You bring the raptor claws forward. You uh, flip the feet down before you put the legs against the bottom of the body. And they're going to snap together just like this. And then you're going to turn the arms into raptor legs and you're going to flip the raptor feet down. And and it's a great little toy. I, I love this toy. You know, this, this is a fantastic raptor. He looks great. He's got an opening mouth. So I would say that Cindersaur has gotten a pretty nice upgrade. Uh, even if it is just a repaint, uh, I, I'm going to say that Cindersaur is looking good. Love the colors. Uh, I think that my Cindersaur, uh, with the combination of smoke damage and age, is not quite the original purple and yellow that he used to be. I, I want to say that he used to look a little bit more like this. But in either case, so... That is, that is Cindersaur, and that's why I wanted to show you the Gen 1 Cindersaur, because Cindersaur was released at the same time as Power of the Primes, uh, Terracons, but we're not going to get to those quite yet. We're getting to them soon. So, uh, this Cindersaur has nothing to do with Abominus. He does not, he does not combine, but for reference... That is, that is Cindersaur. Uh, so, uh, before moving on, let's discuss the... Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, before, I, before I move on to the other versions of Abominus, uh, so you'll, you might notice no hat, uh, sort of Hawaiian shirt. Uh, we're, we're doing things a little bit differently, and here's why. Those of you who have seen my channel, I mean, sure, you're watching this live stream, but if you've ever actually gone through my video library, you will see that the bulk of my channel is made up of how-to stuff. A lot of stuff on how to fix your car, uh, some stuff on fixing things around the house, or how to play, uh, how to play dominoes. I, I did that one. Um, you know, a lot of how-to stuff. And then there's some, some weird stuff. Like I have some songs and, and some stuff that I just did for fun. And, uh, and none of it has anything to do with each other. And I have tried to change the marketing. So it's like, well, I'm Clay Carlino and I do stuff. 
and this is the stuff that I do. But let's face it, the people that are watching my how to fix car videos don't care about toys and geeky stuff. And the people that are watching for the geeky stuff, a lot of them aren't necessarily fixing their cars. And so it, uh, oh, Cheeky Cheeky Boy is, is uh, taking off. Well, good night, Cheeky Cheeky Boy. This one is for you. So anyway, uh, long story short, my channel doesn't grow, at least not quickly. Uh, yeah, I've been at this for, I think, close to four years now, uh, at least three, and uh, and it, it doesn't grow a lot, and, uh, and, I, and I'd like it to. I, I would like it to. And also, I feel like my viewers and my subscribers would get more out of the channel if it were consistent. And so we have created a new channel. Uh, the new channel is called Retrobot. And we came up with that name because an alien robot actually crash landed in the woods behind our house recently. And it turns out that this little alien robot runs off of nostalgia. So he needs nostalgia to stay alive. So we're creating the Retrobot channel to feed him and keep him alive. And so I'm actually going to take all of the old live streams and all of the Transformers and, and retro videos off of the old channel and I'm gonna move them onto the Retrobot channel. And then starting next week, we're going to do these live live streams on Retrobot. Now, the the Clay Carlito channel is still going to remain and I'm still going to post how-to stuff, but it's going to be entirely how-to stuff and, you know, fixing things and stuff like that. And then the miscellaneous stuff that doesn't fit into either category, that is going to a third channel that I have created, which I don't recommend that anybody subscribe to because it is called Thumbs Down. It is going to be the most scattershot, disorganized channel. You'll be lucky when you get an update to that channel, but uh, that is Thumbs Down, the third channel. So, starting next week, we are going to be doing these live streams on Retrobot, and I would just like to ask as a personal favor, please subscribe. If you like this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel because all of the videos I move, I'm going to lose all of the views. They are going to start out at zero. My subscribers started out at zero. A couple of you have actually already subscribed. Thank you very much. I love you so much for doing that. And, uh, and we have to grow the channel all over again. But the nice thing is that when you come to the channel, it's going to be toys. It's going to be games. It's going to be old video game systems. It's going to be Transformers, G.I. Joe, Star Wars. If it's, if it's something that has its roots in stuff that high schoolers would call old, then it's fair game. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So... That is, that is Retrobot. And Colleen, did you ever watch the, uh, the, uh, uh, Lidlard commercial? I have to ask, because I really thought you would get a kick out of the Lidlard commercial. And by the way, the Lidlard commercial, that's going to go over on Thumbs Down. So, <laughs> just in case anybody wants to see the Lidlard commercial, that's going over to Thumbs Down. Um, so, anyway... Uh, oh, also, now the Terracon movie that started out this episode, that is going to be on Retrobot. We have actually already update, uh, uploaded it to the Retrobot website. And, uh, and you know what? If you like it, uh, give it a thumbs up because that, that will help the YouTube algorithm think, you know, want to serve it to people. And, uh, and you know, that, that's... That kind of stuff helps out a lot. Uh, now, let me see. Tara the... Okay, so I have a link. Control-C. And I'm going to post the link in the chat. 
that is the terror of the Terracons short film that we started out this live stream with. So that's it. Uh, that that's me. Beg, humbly begging for your support and and I'm hoping that everybody who has been watching these live streams follows us over to Retrobot uh, because uh, we're going to continue doing this stuff and we want you all there. It's yeah, you know, we have fun with this. We hope that you have fun with us. So, yeah. So, um oh, also, also. So, um I've been, you know, I mentioned that I've been building steps outside and that kind of held up progress on the other big project, which is building a studio in my basement level so that I can do these live streams and other videos and do them in a really nice environment and, and make, you know, have dedicated lighting and have better camera views and stuff like that. And the, uh, the thought is that when we get the studio built, which hopefully won't take too much longer, I just have to finish my steps and then finish the basement and then set up the studio. I, I know it's a lot of steps, but you know, I, 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 for some reason I keep having to work for a living and that really takes a lot of time out of my day. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. And, and if anybody wants to talk to my boss about paying me to just, you know, be cool, Oh, uh, you know what? There's not enough cool there to make it worth it. So anyway, um, yeah, we are, once we get the studio built, then we are going to do kind of a, 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 a ribbon cutting and a, uh, an official, you know, kickoff for Retrobot, but we're going to be using Retrobot before then anyway. So that's the plan. If you happen to be looking for some of our older content, uh, over the next week and you look on the Clay Carlino channel and then you see that it's not there, it's be, it'll be because I've moved it to Retrobot. I do have a link to Retrobot on the banner of the Clay Carlino channel. So you should still be able to find it and please subscribe. So, okay, that's enough begging. Uh, let's move on. We have seen Gen 1 Abominus. We have seen Gen 1 Spark Stalker. Let's take a little bit of a deviation here. Uh, let's go over to the internet. So, in 2013, uh, well, actually, I think that in, yeah, in 2013, they had tr for the Transformers Prime line. And they created this group of Legends class. They called them Predacons. But nonetheless, they were very obviously the Terracons. You know, you, you've got Twin Strike, which is the, the, two, the analog of Sinner Twin. The, uh, you've got Hungar which which is still Hungar. He actually got to keep his name. Windraiser is is based off of Cutthroat, sort of. Predacon Ripper Snapper, who is still Ripper Snapper. And Blight, who is, you know, he's, he's blot. Uh, then they had the gift set, which was a Target exclusive where they did the same molds, except they did them in translucent plastics. And translucent plastics are pretty cool. So let's go ahead and let's pull out Abominus from Transformers Prime. Now, I have transformed him in the best way that I know how. Uh, it is not the way that they showed in the pictures. And also, just as a side note, the uh, the package for this character had everybody misnamed. So I, I think Blight's the only one who got to keep his name. And and this is, this is the guy. It's, it is, they are combined. Um, you know, what that do, 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 do I did not I was just starting a song that doesn't count as a oh you know it sounds as a uh, as a <laughs> lyric she she's clicking every time I use that phrase it's driving me crazy so 
so he he is combined he doesn't he doesn't have hands he has um mouths which you know voltron got away with that so this is him he he's he's very tiny and i will say that he requires no extra pieces that is something that this guy has going for him he's got no extra pieces he just goes together uh the arms are dedicated arms they cannot be legs now you can have them swap places left or right same with the legs the legs can only be legs the legs cannot be arms the uh but they they are they're tiny and you know when i was a kid i i already had a bunch of combiners that when they made the big robot it wasn't that big so having little tiny figures that when they combine together make a character that is s smaller than a legends or than a voyager class character um not i i no they're not mini cons they're legends class figures they're just small they're just small and you combine them into abominus and it's like uh you're not that much of an abomination are you you're just kind of you just kind monica likes this guy she she really likes this guy and so 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 we are showing him and and this is this is the combined form and, and you know i i managed to get the wings up here rather than just kind of hanging around he does look like candy because lots of his parts are translucent and i like translucent parts i like that you don't have to add any pieces but other than that it's a little uninspired uh i will take him apart so that you can see so this is Predacon Ripper Snapper, and we will turn him into some kind of a creature. And I'm, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't even really feel like explaining the transforms to you. <laughs> I know it's bad. Uh, I, I, I should, but, but it, it just, I, I don't know. Their, their transforms aren't, aren't actually interesting enough to make it worth the effort because uh, most of their most of their animal limbs become their robot limbs and, uh, and so like you have this is Predacon Ripper Snapper and this is his his creature mode uh, I, I I it's it's got a tail he's got a tail uh, it kind of flares out. It's got a head. It's so that's that's him. The, the limbs are poseable, you know, at least at, at the shoulder joints and hip joints. Uh, it's not particularly attractive, and there's a there's just a lot of emptiness. Um, I don't really like him. I'm I'm, I'm sorry. I I I don't really like him. And, and then you turn him into a robot. And, and you kind of get this out of the way and you put the head up and then you, you split the face of the creature and, and fold these down to make some sort of foot. And then of course the, the legs of the animals become the arms and he kind of reminds me of uh who is that ma manta ray from beast wars uh depth charge so he kind of reminds me of depth charge let's go to the cheaper cam so this is the other view and and it's not a terrible robot mode it's not a fantastic robot mode but he is so dinky he is just so tiny. Yeah, here, let me put him side by side with uh, Sparkstalker here, uh, or Cind Cindersaur, and uh, I'll put him into robot mode so that they can stand upright. There you go. Cindersaur would flatten this guy. You know? Like, like I feel like this guy would be like, eh, 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 and Cindersaur would be like, bonk. So, yeah, um not not really feeling 
feeling uh, Ripper Snapper. Uh, we got Blight, which I guess they did they lose the, the rights to Blot? Blight's a good name, but boy, it doesn't have the character of Blot. Blot says what the character is. Blight kind of sounds like a disease or uh, or like an infection but uh but let's go ahead and we'll turn him into a creature and so once again the the arms of the robot become the legs of the creature uh the the legs of the of the creature become or the robot become the arms of the creature and then you flip down the head uh, he now granted he does look more like a creature than gen one blot but he's but he's just yeah he's, he's not hey he's actually probably one of the best ones uh, i'll put him down on the other camera view so joy has a question uh do you have the Happle, Happy Meal Transformers toys? I do not, Joy. Uh, I, uh, I I have not been able to collect most of the Happy Meal Transformers toys. I have tried to get them when they come out and failed. I, so, yeah, uh, I, 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 I'm sure that I, I've managed to get some over the years, but I do not have full sets, which is sad. And I bet that they go for a lot of money these days. So this is Blight. And uh, and as creatures go, I would say that he is probably one of the best in this group. You know, he's got the translucent blues. And uh, let's go ahead and turn him into a robot. So you're going to take the beast head and just kind of flip it up out of the way. And then you're going to take the beast arms and turn them into robot feet. You're going to turn him upright. You're going to open the chest and flip out the tiny, tiny little robot head. And then you're going to flip out the fists. And there he is a robot. And let's put him on the other camera view. And once again, he's so tiny. He's such a little guy. He's such a little guy. And... And Cindersaur wants to come over and kick him. And Cindersaur's happy. <sighs> okay, let's not be mean to Blight. Bl Blight is, you know, is not bad. But, uh, but he's just so tiny. He's so incredibly tiny. He's too tiny. I mean, even even Legends class Cindersaur is, you know, let's let's turn Legends class Cindersaur back into a robot. So uh, we're gonna open the little door on the back, which also you can take a, uh, a, a with this guy, you can take one of the, uh, the Titan Masters figures. And wait, if I can get him out. If I can get him out. Oh, I'm losing pieces of Skullgrin. There we go. So you can actually take these guys in there and have them ride in there because that 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 was the gimmick for power of the primes all of the legends class figures were able to be piloted by a uh, by a titan master so you know that that was kind of cool so anyway um let's turn turn cinder Soar back into a robot and we'll flip the legs around here and put the feet out like that and fold the tail down fold that up and then get rid of the toe claws there okay so there we've got cinder Soar, which as a legends class figure looks great and then we put look look even even cinder Soar as a legends class figure towers over this this little dude uh, so anyway this is blight uh we've got so let, let's take let's take uh dragon to no no uh what what, what wind razor wind razor here 
So, Windraiser turns into a bird creature. Uh, almost like a pterodactyl type thing. And, uh, you're pretty much going to have just kind of spread the limbs out. Like, every limb that, that, that you can find, just, just spread it out in every direction. And it makes a bird. And, and it's actually a pretty good bird. You know, I, I, the, I'm going to say that, that the, the detail is nice. And the colors are nice. The translucent parts are nice. It's very scrawny, but but as it's posable, you've got posability. So that that's that's not bad. Um, to go into robot mode, you're going to put the beak of the bird down in the chest, and that is going to expose the head which is going to come up out of the back and then you flip the head forward and then you just rotate the the wings forward and flip up the feet and i th oh and you're also going to make the shoulders come forward so and fold up the wings as much as you can so it's it, it's a decent robot mode you know it's decent i'm ignoring you at this point <laughs> just so you know and so there we go uh you know you fold up the tail against the back and so there is there is wind razor and and Cindersaur doesn't want to stand. There, there we go. So there is Windraiser with Blight and Cutthroat. Uh, let's put Cutthroat in the back there. Cutthroat doesn't want to stand either. Oh, and apparently other Cutthroat doesn't want to stand. Okay, so we still have we still have what used to be Sinner Twin, and now it's like Twinnado or something. <laughs> uh, it, let's see, Twin Strike. His name is Twin Strike. So let's go for the Beast Mode. They all love the Beast Modes. And with this guy, you're going to bring the legs forward, and you're going to rotate these little panels on his lower legs down and push them in. Uh, it's, it's a little tricky. They, they kind of want to stick. There we go. And then I'm going to rotate this one down and push it in. You're going to see how I push that. There we go. Like that. You're going to flip the double tail. Oh, actually here. Wait. I guess, I don't know what to do with the feet. Feet do something. I don't know what they do. Oh, I, I think that the feet just do this. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's one molded leg. So there you go. So the legs are going to go down, and then the heads are going to go back. And that is Twin Strike. And let's go ahead and show it on the other camera view. Twin Strikes Transform is probably the least impressive of all of the characters because his the back legs of the creature are the lower legs of the robot, the front legs of the creature are the arms, uh, you, you fold the tail and the, the head's out of the way. And so let's go ahead and show that, I'm going to fold the tail up and oh actually the heads become the arms, I'm sorry. So you get the front legs out of the way. And I'm going to bring these down along the side. And then he pretty much just stands up. I guess we'll get these, these little legs just kind of up against the back and out of the way. And uh, you are going to do something to, to expose the head. Uh, oh, you open the chest. 
Open the chest just like that. And then you can flip up the little tiny head. And there he is. And, you know, I guess it, it's cool that he's got dragon heads for arms. That's kind of cool. So let's let's go there. That's Twin Strike. So I guess that isn't so bad. Uh, you know, again, teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. Little, little, little tiny dudes. And then we've got Hunger. And Hunger. Now, now this is nice. They have the super robot head built into him. You don't have to add it. And then you're going to flip the dragon heads forward and uh and this is the robot mode i know the other ones i showed you the creature modes first this is the robot mode he looks delicious and i'm going to show you his robot mode here and he's a, he's pretty much the same size that is one thing about these guys is that as a combiner team they're all on the same scale and th and that's pretty cool oh oh Oh, oh, yeah, you know what? Um, so, here, Monica showed me this, and I was afraid that she was making me eat it. Uh, this is this is candy with a monster inside. This is a monster made of candy. Look at how similar they look. That's amazing. So, there we go. So, uh, to turn him into a creature, you take the tail, and the tail is going to flip up right here let me i want to be careful because i'm because it's old and i, I really don't want to break him I, and i'm not in love with these guys but i don't want to break them so i'm gonna take the the dragon heads and point them forward and the tail ah oh, there we go okay it's just a little stiff tail is going to close now the tail closes really nicely against the body here and it's one of the few places with this group where you have really nice definitive motions where it's not just sort of moving things away haphazardly. Uh, yeah, that, that's, I think, one of the things that I don't like about a lot of the features of this team is that a lot of the movements seem a little ambiguous. You know, moving stuff. Stop it! So, so there we go. This is Hunger, and there he is in all of his glory. And so that is the Transformers Prime set. They called them Predacons, but they are obviously the Terrorcons. And, and they combine. So... We will set these guys aside. We have we have covered them. So neither, neither. Not gonna stop saying it. Okay, I'm just saying I'm not gonna stop saying it. I will try to watch it, but I'm not gonna stop saying it. Don't threaten me. So um. Now for the good stuff. This is the good stuff. Uh, I, I need some water because, you know, we've been going for almost two hours. So, Power of the Primes. Power of the Primes was an interesting line. It, uh, it did not have nearly as large of a release as I would have expected. Oh, also, uh, wait, before I go into Power of the Primes, the, uh, the Transformer Primes uh, Predacons had, each had weapons that had various ways of combining. These are them. Okay, that, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I don't want to waste your time. It's not that interesting. I, you know, they can hold their weapons. You can put them in holes. But yeah. So, um, so Power of the Primes did not have as large of a release as I would have expected. It seemed like there just weren't a lot of figures. You had the Terracons released. You had the Dinobots released. You had Starscream, which was a body, but then for some 
ridiculous reason you did not have the aerial bots repainted as Decepticon Seekers. I will rant on that again in the future, I promise. But uh, you, you did get Darkwing and Dreadwind, which we will talk about. But they never had anything to do with Starscream, and that's still only two limbs. So, how, what are you supposed to finish him with? Um, you also had Alita One, who was a slight retool of Starscream. Again, you had two figures, uh, Nova Star and Moonracer, that were released as appendages. It took another year for them to release another two figures, Lancer and Greenlight, who were just repaints of Moonracer and, uh, and Nova Star to be able to complete that combiner. I don't know what was going on at Hasbro during that year, but something, something was weird. Uh, also, Unlike with Combiner Wars, where every classic Gen 1 team, when reimagined, got one new character that was not part of the Gen 1 canon. So, in the Aerial Bots, you had Alpha Bravo, the only helicopter. You had, um, you had the Protectabots with Rook, an armored personnel carrier. Really great figure. I like Rook. And they didn't even repaint him as anything. I mean, they retooled him for, I want to say, uh, he was retooled as, as Swindle for the Combaticons, but not a straight up repaint. You had, um, uh, let's see, what was... There was a, an SUV character added to the Stunicons. And then there was... Uh, they, of course, repainted one of the aerial bots as Blastoff for the Combaticons. And then later, they released a space shuttle version. And see, here's the thing. In every case... Uh, MicroMaster comments, are these the same guys behind you? Oh, so... Um, so... Yeah, in every case, you they would then introduce a repaint of one of the other characters as the the missing character from the Gen 1 team, meaning that for me, because I'm a sucker, I all of my Combiner Wars teams had six members with, with an extra member that could either be swapped over to some other team or you make the subgroup bigger and give them the ability to combine in multiple ways. So, uh, so Kyoji was asking a question. Um, let's see. Uh, love to have seen Decepticon combiner with limbs based on MicroMaster Airstrike Patrol. And it just so happens that this is the Airstrike Patrol, the original Gen 1 MicroMasters, uh, of course, they, they weren't a combiner team. When the MicroMasters first came out, they were, they were a team of little tiny Transformers. I always liked the MicroMasters, and I loved the fact that you would get four in a pack. And then they had, in Armada, they had the Minicons, and you'd get three in a pack. It's like, okay, and now the, uh, the Micro Masters and the Battle Masters, or whatever they're calling them, only come two in a pack. And you know, two in a pack is not a subgroup. You know, that, it's just, I don't know. I've, I've kind of lost my interest in them. So, so uh, yeah, these are the uh, the micro master airstrike patrol and we can look at them later if we if we have that much gumption but we'll, we'll see what the energy levels are so uh i don't know where he went i'm gonna put him right there okay put him right there because i feel like I, I i i feel like things are stacked precariously and they could come toppling over very easily so back to power of the primes you didn't have any extra characters. You didn't even have enough characters to complete the combiners in a lot of cases. We did get Dinobots forming Volcanicus, which is awesome, and we're gonna talk about it, but not tonight. And we got 
all of the Terracons, and oh, this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff right here. So let's go ahead and let's look at Power of the Primes Hungar. Hungar! And uh, I'll, I'll aim the camera up a little. There we go. So this is Power of the Primes Hungar with, uh, with the upgrade kit. I did get the upgrade kit for... Uh, for the Terracons, and it came with a pair of uh, pair of large blasters, and I did a little bit of kit bashing to add some holes so that uh, so that he could use the blasters in multiple modes. I'm trying to uh, trying to get things to focus. Uh, hold on, I, I I apologize, but I really want these things to be in focus. So let me just adjust. I like this new camera because it gives me a manual focus, but I also don't like that I have to do a manual focus. So there we go. Uh, he's looking good. You know, this is a fully posable hungar, and he looks great. His colors pop. He is dynamic, and he's got... I, I feel like... Hungar is probably one of the the best bodies of the Combiner Wars style Transformers. And so let's go ahead and just take a look at Hungar. I'm going to put his extra guns down. So here he is. The detail on him is excellent. The sculpts are beautifully done. Uh, he's got those horrible foil stickers, but at least they're used sparingly and they're in recessed areas so they don't peel immediately. That was another thing with Power of the Primes. They had all of these, these foil stickers that were awful. Just terrible. And Starscream had the worst absolutely the worst they covered his back they they didn't even sit flat just terrible 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 foil stickers and, and i took them off and did some detail painting and even though my detail painting isn't that good it's better than those horrible hideous ass foil stickers his foil stickers don't look too bad they've got a nice recessed area so they haven't started to peel up and, and like I said, they're used sparingly. So, yeah. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying Kyoji's, uh, Kyoji's song here. I can't believe my hunger. I want it so bad. I can taste it. It drives me mad to see it wasted when I, <laughs> when I need it so bad. It's burning me. I'm hungry. You want me to get the ukulele? I can't play that. I don't know the chords. I don't know. Uh... No, I'm not going to do it because I don't know the chords. I don't know the chords. Sorry. Maybe in the future. Anyway, very nice reference, Kyoji, once again. So, I haven't been. I haven't said creep all night. That was because that one's for Kyoji for doing Hungar, and this one is because I said creep. Mm. And this one's because I said creep. And this one's because I said okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it hits you after you swallow. Yeah, it's like, as long as I keep drinking, no problem. But as soon as I swallow, then the, the aroma really comes up. So, yeah. Um, fantastic robot mode. Looks great. Posable. Just an excellent reimagining of the character. Let's go ahead and put him in creature mode. Um... 
creature mode is, you know, th there are a few minor criticisms that I have of creature mode. So one thing, you, you, you flip the head down, you open up the chest, flip the head down, close the chest, and then you put the tail up. The tail does this really cool thing. So you've got these details that stick out when he's in robot mode, and then you push them down and that makes the fins pop up for his creature mode. That's really neat. I've never seen that kind of a mechanic in any other Transformers toy. So that's really, really neat. Let's take the arms. Uh, you're gonna flip the creature claws there and then you can actually give it a little bit of a bend there. Just like that. And the feet, so this is great. The, they made all of the new Terracons with the creature mode so that they could open their mouths. Well, almost all. And we will talk about in about that in just a bit. <clears throat> so you've got dragon mouths and then the front legs of the creature come out of the back here and fold out and then swing down like that. And so that is his dragon mode. And I'm... I like the dragon mode, okay? I really like the dragon mode. I love how poseable the necks are. I love that the mouths open and close. Uh, that is fantastic. Uh, his tail is a little bit stubby and there's obviously this big, this big bunch of belly kibble here that, that really doesn't fit with the design of the creature mode, okay? It's, it's just down there below the belly and you just have to ignore it. The, uh, the ankles of the back legs, that, that doesn't look good. Uh, now, it's necessitated by the fact that this is where the combiner ports are, so I get it. I'm going to forgive it. But nonetheless, it does hurt the, the creature mode. That being said... This is an awesome creature mode. And let me put it on the other camera so that you can see him. Uh, he is just, let me, let me open his mouth. He, he, he looks better with an open mouth. Maybe, there we go. So, so yeah, look at that. He looks great. And his limbs really do go into all sorts of different directions. And, and oh, let me show you something else. Uh, so, you know, I've got these extra gun things here. And uh, there is a hole on the side and a peg on his arm. And so you can have the guns just stick onto the legs like that. And they've got these big knobby things which kind of get in the way. But it's not too bad. And so, you know, he can have his guns in creature mode. And that's pretty badass. That is, that is actually pretty cool. And let me go ahead and go to the other view. So, yeah. That is Power the Primes Hungar with the upgrade kit cannons. And they look great. They really do look great. So, yeah, that's Hungar. We're gonna set him aside. Uh, let's move these. Yeah, I had to make all these little platforms for guys to sit on just so you could see everybody. And let's go ahead and take a look at Sinner Twin next. This is Sinner Twin. And so you can see him here. I've got him in a kneeling pose. I'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and make him stand up. In order to get those extreme knee uh, placements, I had to open the doors on the back. You can see that he is also sporting the cannons that came with the up upgrade kit. I've got, now these can split apart, but I'm just having him carry them as a double cannon. And uh, he looks great. He's a great figure. Uh, he is very poseable, obviously. The colors pop. 
Uh, we've already talked about my opinion of of them being all different colored, but that was a decision that was made long ago. And so now they have lovingly recreated his color scheme. Let's just put Gen 1 Abominus back here, and then I'll move Hungar back. There we go. And so Sinner Twin can be here. He really does this... This is what we imagined these toys represented when we were children. And I have to say that it's, it's worth the wait. You know, the detail on him is excellent. The posability is excellent. Now, one thing I noticed, however, is that Sinner Twin feels light. And a lot of these pieces feel a little bit floppy and a little bit loosey-goosey in a way that a lot of the other characters don't have. I mean, the plastic doesn't even feel the same as the plastic used on the other characters, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe it has to do with the bright colors. Um, maybe it was just something with that batch. I don't know. But uh, I will say that... that as gorgeous as this figure is, uh, he is one of the weaker of the Power of the Primes Terracons. Now, that being said, even as a, you know, one of the weaker versions, at least in terms of toy quality, he's still pretty kick-ass cool. L just look at his body. You know, from, from every angle, he looks good. His proportions are nice. And as you saw in robot mode, Hungar is larger, but he doesn't tower over the other Terracons the way that the Gen 1s did. That's one of the things I love about the Power of the Primes and Combiner War style combiners. They, they still have that large guy in the middle, but it's not, you can, you can still feel like they're they're on similar levels. Yes, Hungar is leader. He's a little bit bigger, but this guy can still hold his own. And then when you put them together with the fact that they were usually paired up with some kind of Legends class figure that would that would be incorporated in at some point, then the team suddenly had a whole new dynamic where there were there was a lot of variety in the group and so it didn't matter so much that hungar towers over cindersor because cindersor is the little guy on the team but that's okay because they have all these different things i love the versatility that was created in the team environments in the combiner war series and carried over into the power of the primes and i'm really really hoping i am so hoping hasbro please please okay wait everybody you, you know you know what i'm gonna ask you to do Get away from the screens. I need to talk to Hasbro for just a second. Hasbro, please keep making Combiner Wars style combiners. I will buy them. Go ahead and repaint the aerial bots as Decepticon Seekers. Even though I've already built my own and painted my own, I'll still buy yours. Give me Seacons. I pre-ordered the Seacons. They disappeared from the world. I, I want my Seacons. I want I want the Terracons repainted as Monstructor. Please. Please. I I want to tell you some sort of sob story. That'll make you feel bad for me. That will make you understand how much I need more combiners. But the truth is, I don't have anything. But I am a sucker, and I will give you my money willingly if you just make more of this stuff. E e even if they're repaints. You know, like, for Monstructor, 
Straight up repaints. Straight up repaints. Throw in a Dinobot. Repaint a Dinobot. I don't, I'll buy it. I will buy it. So, uh, everybody can come back to their screens. We now return to the Transformers. Also notice that with Combiner Wars, they have gone to a lot more effort to keep the kibble to a minimum. Yes, they still have ki kibble. They're Transformers. They're supposed to have kibble. But, you know, now we've got the heads kind of tucked back here. And, and, you know, it's just, it's backpack sized. Yes, you've got these these little claw things, but, but they're flat up against the, the arm here. You've got the tail, but it's flat up against the leg. You know, he's, he, he's, he looks like a cohesive character. So let's turn him in to a beast. And we're going to flip the head down and close this door. We're going to put the twin heads here and they do kind of snap into place. And then we're going to flip the heads over because the top is here. I think the top is there. I'm not 100% sure that the top is there. I think that that we're going to flip, do, pivot it at the waist and then put the legs together, opening the doors on the back of the legs and then fold them around. And close them over his back section and that's going to make the body of the beast mode. There we go. And then we close these little doors and fold out the tail, just like that. And then we just kind of tighten everything up and get everything to snap together. Then we're gonna fold down the back legs of the creature. And now the, the shoulders of the robot are on these double hinge points here and so this actually can go down like this and this can go down like this you see what's happening there you know it kind of does that thing it was up like this and then oh wait it was here it was up like this and now it's down like that and then we're going to fold in the fists like that and flip around this creature claw here. And, oh, oh, you know what? You don't rotate at the waist. And I might be able to get it to transform. I might be able to rotate that. Please let me rotate that. There we go, yes. There's enough flexibility that I can rotate that. So, there we go. We didn't need to rotate the waist. I am gonna fold in that fist and then put that creature claw there. Now look what they did here. Look at how they have this hinged on a pin here, but then they have this extra bit of plastic here to fill in the gap so that when you put the heads up, it still looks good. That's great. That is so nice. And of course we can open the mouths and that's, that's nice. Look at that. Oh my gosh. He is great. Yes. Focus in on that camera because you want to focus in on that. Oh, it had it for a second there. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. He is amazing. What a good creature mode. What a good creature mode. Let's go ahead and put him on the other camera. So, oh, and also we can take this this gun and we can put it on his back right there. Yeah. That is great. And he tried to bite Cindersaur's butt. And I, I guess he probably would. Now, I, I kind of wish that these were on ball joints and I could spread them apart. Uh, they're, they're permanently parallel to each other. They can't, they can't move outwards. But, uh, but 
that's a that's a small that's a small criticism. Uh, mostly, I love this creature. He looks awesome. I love the diminutive back legs and then the oversized front legs. It's very dynamic and it's very unique. It's distinctive and it's something that the original didn't have. So while they're reimagining these guys, they're giving them character and design that, that wasn't part of the originals, but works well. This, this, sort of unnatural body dynamic makes it more than just a two-headed creature it's a uniquely bodied two-headed creature you know it looks distinctly alien and unnatural and i think that that really helps its identity as a terracon as a monster so yeah uh loving sinner twin and uh I'm going to move this little box thingy I created out of the way so that we can put him back here. And now let's go to Cutthroat. We got Cutthroat here. And we'll move his little pedestal out of the way. So Cutthroat has a nice robot mode. Uh, you can't see the head much here. Wait, here we pivot him this way. And there. And you can see that I've done a little bit of kit bashing on him so that he could hold the original uh, Abominous feet as uh, as weapons and maybe jets uh, So here I'm gonna take those off so that you can see him as he was originally intended. I ordered these ABS five millimeter rods and unfortunately they only came in white but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I drilled in a hole and then I welded them in here and I wish that that looked better, but you know what? You can't see it when you fold the wing down. So that gives me some, some five millimeter posts on his back that allow those to hold these with these five millimeter holes that are there. So this is, this is cutthroat and he really does look good. He really does look good. The uh, the detail on the bird head is fantastic. The the details on the wings look great. You know, look at them from the back. The plastic is shiny. The colors pop. He feels, for the most part, very tight. Uh, one problem that I did have with Cutthroat, for whatever reason the head of the bird just keeps wanting to fall off. Every time I would play with him, the head would come off and and I had a little bit of a, I've continued to have a little bit of that problem with the jaw and with the little thing on the head. And I don't know if they're all like that, but mine was definitely like that. So what I did, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. I'm gonna try and get the, put it on the other camera. If you look closely in the joint for the head, you see how it is not purple in there. It is actually kind of silvery. That is because I put an eyeglasses screw in that joint on both sides. I very, very carefully drilled with my tiniest drill bit a little hole into the peg and I added eyeglasses screws to hold the head on. And you can actually still remove the head, okay? Because the, the screws are inserted into the holes, and if you flex the head enough, they go around, but it makes those pegs long enough that it holds the head securely. I, every time I would touch him, his head would fall off. And, and that really hurts my enjoyment of the toy. I just have to say, that that definitely hurts my enjoyment of the toy. Now, once I fix that, oh boy, I love this guy. So, it, you know, uh, it was it was a case where yes, he took a little bit of love to get him there, but boy, once I once I made the change and his head wasn't always popping off in my hands, then this is an excellent excellent toy. And uh and so, yeah, you've got full posability. 
just like the rest of the Combiner Wars figures. A nice body dynamics, great color. Look, look at the head. Look at the head sculpt. You know, he... His head is just nice. The camera wants to focus on my head, not his head. Let's go to the other camera. And this is... This is why having a camera with a manual focus is so nice. So... You can see the detail there. You know, the colors are so nice. And even though he's reminiscent of the Gen 1 character, the Gen 1 never looked this good. Let's be honest. The Gen 1 version of all of these characters just is not that good. And I know it is like a sacrilege to say that the modern toys are better than the ones we had when we were kids. But you know what? The modern versions are better than the originals. I said it. I said it. Not in every single case, but certainly in the case of Combiner Wars. And in the case of Power of the Primes. These toys are better than the, the original counterparts. They just are. And I love them. And I don't mind that I had to wait 33 years to get them. Because I've got them now. And I love them. And I'm going to continue to love them. So... Let's go ahead and take his uh, his gun out of his hand. Oh, you know what? I should point out, all of these characters came with what they called prime armor. And they were these things. And these are the hands and the fists for the combined mode. And you could kind of, you know, you could fold that up inside there so that it's just like this. And then they have these little tabs in here. And you have two thumbs on each hand. And then you just kind of put it around the chest and lock it in. And now he's got a big chest thing. And, and see, the idea is that you could then take out the center pieces and you would have a, uh, a Power of the Primes prime, which I, it's hard for me to imagine these little headmasters that aren't heads instead they're enigmas or something like that and and say that they're primes but i i, I wh whatever uh, and then then you plug them in and it'll it enables you to attach these these prime characters to any of uh, of the 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 guys and as a play feature um, I, I, I'm okay with things that add, where you're adding guys and it's a power up, but from a design standpoint, that, that doesn't make it look better. You know, that I, I'm, that, that doesn't help the toy. Uh, and, and you know, that it's a mild criticism. It, they need to have a gimmick in every line. And I respect that they have essentially taken the the Titan Masters, the Headmaster feature, and just re rethought it to use it in a new and unique way. I think that that's cool, and I applaud them for doing it. But I don't actually really enjoy the gimmick. For me, it, it doesn't add any play value to the toy. It doesn't add to the design. Um, you know the the fist that this makes is it, it, it is not quite as good as one of the combiner wars fists because of all the extra space that it takes to take this cube and create a socket for it you have these things which you know you pull them out and i guess they can hold them as a gun it's not really a very impressive gun uh, doesn't look like much so for the most part when I was using these I would just leave them in there you will see that I have attached these in here and uh, they didn't want to stay in so I did a little bit of kit bashing to make them go in deeper and so now these I could still pull them out, out if I wanted to but but I don't so they're they're in there uh, until such time as I decide that I don't want them in there, which may be never. I, I may keep them in there forever. So we're going to take out his weapons. 
and uh, and it's important to know that that that's there, just just so that you know what it was like in the original. Um, so we're gonna take the bird head and we're gonna put it over his head. The bird head can't quite like he can't look up. Uh, that that's I I keep wanting him to. And I've done a little bit of kit bashing to try and get a little bit more posability out of that. But, uh, but yeah, the bird head is, is always going to be at that angle. That, that is as high up. You're never going to be able to get the bird head to actually face forward, which is a little bit weird. I, I, I don't, I, I don't quite understand it. You know, th okay, there, you know, that, that's as... That's as far forward as you're going to get that bird head. The beak does open, which is important. That's important. And then we're going to fold in the wrists. And we're going to spread the wings. And I'm going to spread them a little bit further. And then the bottom of the legs. So they've got kind of a double hinge hidden inside the leg here. So you pull this out like this. And then you pull the whole thing up and it collapses over his leg like that. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then you're going to bring those together just like that. And then you have the tail, which closes down here. And then you have the bird legs, which go forward like that. And this one can go forward like that. And then the arms, so the arms do do this thing. So the arms are going to, you're going to bend the elbows and rotate the elbows out to the side like this. And then actually, you know what? I'm going to disengage the legs a little bit. So maybe there we go. Okay. So now with the arms out to the sides like this rotated around sideways, you see these little tabs here, they go into these little notches on the waist right there just like that and like that and now we can close the legs and you can get the arms in there with the legs in place but it, it, it's just a little bit more fiddly so I do it like that and now we can have these like this now the prime armor it has uh, it has those little tabs that that held it onto the chest well it also has these little holes in the back of the wings so you could take the prime armor and stick it onto the back of the uh, the uh, bird mode oh you do need to kind of pivot the wings out just a little bit like that and that spaces these appropriately and now you can have the prime armor on the back and, and I really appreciate that they made it so that it would attach in either mode you know that's pretty cool I don't I don't use the prime armor because I've got the upgrade kit so this is gonna go bye-bye uh, the the gun can go into this little hole right here it I don't like that it does this, that it pretty much points at his beak. You know, that's, I don't know. I, I don't like that. So I, uh, I just rotate it down like this. And I imagine that if, uh, if he's flying and an Autobot is flying behind him, trying to catch up, he can shoot him. He can just, you know, he can just, you know, pew, pew, rear facing cannons. And then you can take these things since I'm since I'm not using them in the combined mode or you know I can take these and I can put them on the wings and yeah you know, that to me is really cool you know now he's got these big thruster things in the back and guns and yeah that's that's his bird mode he looks great love it just love it. Let's go to the other camera view. That's him. And what can I say? 
He is a fantastic creature. There's a lot of points of articulation. You can have the wings down like this. So he doesn't always have to be in a swooping pose. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent toy. Makes me happy. So glad that I have him. So glad that they made him. Let's go to, let's look at Blot. Okay, Blot was always my favorite Terracon. And so I was really looking forward to this one. And you can see that now he's, uh, he's also got the upgrade kit. We'll, we'll take the upgrade kit off for now. This is, uh, so you remember me telling you how that, that one that was on Sinner Twin can split into two guns? Well, this is the upgrade kit split into two guns. Okay. And so, yeah, that's that. And, uh, and so this is, this is Blot. He, of course, also came with prime armor. It would attach to the chest in ways that were unimpressive. So I'm not going to show it because I, I don't, I just don't like it that much. It's not that good. Nonetheless, even barring the fact that the prime armor didn't really add much, he looks great in robot mode. He looks fantastic. I love how they integrated that whole backpack thing from the Gen 1 design into part of his transform. That's excellent. He's, of course, poseable. He's got big claws going over his hands. The, the, the legs fold up. He doesn't really have a lot of kibble sticking off of him. The head sculpt is great. He's, you know, just a wonderful, wonderful figure. He, uh, now with him, he has a little compartment where you can plug the prime armor into his chest because it didn't really grip. Um, but like I said, it doesn't look that good. So, you know, we don't, we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to put his gun down. Uh, here's something that's awesome. I love this. This is something, again, that I haven't seen in a lot of Transformers before. Watch what happens when I flip in the, when I fold in the fists. Huh? Huh? That is great. From fist to pinchy claw. That is fantastic. Looks so good. Just looks so good. And so we've got the creature head and and I'm and I like to turn the uh, the robot head around just so that if you do see the cre the the robot head through something that he's not like staring you in the face. The uh, the shoulders come down like this. So you see this this little, you can see it better from the back. So you see that? So that goes like that. And now we can bring this forward like that. Now here's what's odd about Blot. When you, tr okay, we're gonna free up the legs and then we're gonna put the feet together. And for this guy, instead of just collapsing the legs against the bottom, you're going to wrap them around and snap them up against the back. And he kind of looks like some kind of troll creature. And I have to say, it took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, because I kind of liked him as a sprawling orangutan thing. And here's the other thing, because the joint for his feet is in the ankle, the fact that his knees don't have a joint really, really hurts it. And at some point I'm going to give him knee joints. He needs knee joints. The, you know, the, his, the fact that you, you just can't, you can't change the angle on them is, it hurts it. Also, his mouth doesn't open. But I have fixed that with some care with some careful dissecting and some cutting because these were separate pieces. So it just took a little bit of massaging with an X-Acto knife and now this piece is on its own hinge and he can now open his mouth. 
And, I mean, that's so important! And I know, the first, the original one, I, I couldn't even tell what the mouth was. But this one definitely had a molded in mouth, and I like him so much better now that he's got a dedicated mouth. So, yeah, let's see if the camera can get that in focus. That, that, that's not too bad. So, and, and we can take the gun again, and it can go right here. So he's still got the thing going over his shoulder. Uh, he does kind of look like a troll. He looks like a troll. Let me go to this, the other camera view. But nonetheless, really, really neat figure. And with the, with the fact that his, I can make his mouth open super, super wide, uh, that, that is really cool. So it took, it took a little bit of massaging. Uh, at first I was a little bit disappointed with Blot, but I have to say that I have learned to love, love, love Blot. And, uh, and the quality on the toy is excellent. His, the plastic feels solid. There are no loosey goosey joints. Uh, his, his body dynamics obviously are, are good and solid. Everything just clicks into place. I love the claws. The claws are so great. The, the fact that they can actually sort of open and close is awesome. He is a great creature. Just fantastic. So, let us now go to what I'm going to say is the shining star of this team. And this is funny because this is the character that I really wasn't all that excited about, but he was the first one to come out when they were, at least in my area, he's the first one that I saw in stores and I scooped him up. You can see that he's got the, uh, the upgrade kit, which are these guns here. I'm gonna take them off. Now, these blue guns that I have attached to them are actually his original thing, so I'm gonna put those back on so that you can see him in all his glory. So this is how he came. And let me tell you, this, this may be the best toy in the group. Look, his colors, solid, looks good, looks really good. Uh, let's go to the other camera view so that you can appreciate it in focus. So, of course the detail is excellent. The, uh, all of his joints are, are, are nice and tight. Sculpt is nice. Body dynamics are nice. Once again, not a lot of kibble sticking out of him. He's got, he's got Wolverine claws. Okay. That's fantastic. He, you know, I, I just want him to be going, hey, bub. Get away from the kid, bub. Except that, you know, he's a Terracon, so he would probably be the one chasing the kid. But, you know, super posable. Unlike Sinner Twin, when he's in robot mode, he's got a lot of articulation. And everything it just really works well. And then you put him into creature mode. And creature mode also. Fantastic. So I'm going to rotate the head. I'm going to pull the shark head out. And it snaps right there like that. And then we're just going to rotate the hands around. We're going to pull out the shark tail like this. And then we're going to open up the back of the legs like that. And we're going to rotate it at the waist. We're going to snap the legs together. Let the, the thighs fold into the legs and then close the legs back up and then release the legs like this. And now you put the, the shark fins together, the, the tail fins, 
and they're just gonna go right in like that and look at that. Oh, and his mouth opens because of course his mouth opens. Look at that creature mode. Just look at that, take that in. That is fantastic. He is so dynamic. He lurches forward like, like a predator. This, I mean, yeah. I don't have to say it, you can see it. The creature mode is super posable. It has all the articulation that you would hope for. And it looks like a shark. You know, it looks threatening. No longer does he look, you know, kind of like an egg and he's cute. He, he, he looks threatening and dangerous. This is an excellent, excellent creature. And probably the, the best member of the group in terms of design and toy quality. When I got him... I mean, I played with this guy for hours without having any of the other team members, and it, it lost none of its play value. He is fantastic. But of course, we're here for Abominus. We want to see Abominus. So, let's do Abominus. Form, feet, and legs. Form, arms, and... Oh, wait, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, let's start with Blot here. I'm going to take off the little gun. And we're going to half transform him. We need to, we need to pull the head back and get, get this out of the way. And then we're going to have him, has, have his robot mode face forward. And then we're going to flip this around like this, like many of the Combiner Wars characters. We're also going to put the arms back up to the shoulders. And then we're going to open up the back of the legs, just like we just did with Ripper Snapper. And then we're going to close those. And then we're going to fold the feet up like this. Now there is a there is a little nub right here which you use when you're turning him into robot mode and you also use it in combiner mode. And there's just a little hole right inside there that you can sort of barely see. And that is going to engage that little nub and give his, give his feet a definitive place to rest. And then I'm going to put his feet around to the back. Now, there is... So, there's this little rectangular nub on the side of the arm, the forearm. And there's another little rectangular hole there. That gives you a place to seat those claws so that they can face forward in his appendage mode. That's another thing about the Terracons as a group and as a combiner. It seems like, whereas with a lot of the Combiner Wars stuff, the, the aerial bots and the Stunicons, they didn't really give a lot of thought as to what to do with the robot parts when they were turning into appendages. And sometimes you just kind of had to kind of put them up sort of out of the way and hope that they didn't get in the way too much. Uh, this is more definitive. You know, they've obviously learned a bit since they've been doing these toys. And I re once again, Hasbro, please keep doing Combiner War style combiners. I, please, please, please. I will, I, 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 I'll buy them. I promise. Promise. So, um, oh, oh, you know what? We should pivot at the waist. So I'm going to open that up. Pivot at the waist and then close that up again. And, oh, got to get his, his legs there. Oh, gosh, it doesn't want to close. Why doesn't it want to close? Close for me. There we go. There we go. All right. So, 
And he's done! No. So... There we go. And then, see, it's got this double hinge here. And you kind of have to futz with that to get it to, to angle up into the uh, beast head. And then you're going to hook these red bits around a couple little posts that are on the body there. And that gives you this. And then you can have this down here. And then you can take his gun and just sort of put his gun there. And uh, and and it's okay like that. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put his gun on the other side just like this. So that is him, pretty much as a foot. And just for giggles, I will show the the original feet, so that uh, so that you can see what what Hasbro intended for us. So there we go. We got a little foot. Uh, I, I guess what you could do is you could put these around backwards and then you could plug the fist in like that and kind of have a clawed foot. So we have that. And uh, we're going to get Sinner Twin here. And uh, he is not as difficult from, from his beast mode to turn into a combiner limb. We're going to we're going to take the front paws and we're going to rotate them out like this. Oh, 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 that, that came off. Let's snap that back on. There we go. Rotate them out like this. And then you remember that kind of double joint? Well, we're going to flip that up as though we're turning him into a robot. And then we're going to take this. And there's a little triangular shaped divot right on the inside here and that meets up with this little triangular shaped peg right there it's just a little one and it doesn't hold it super securely but it does align everything and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side so we'll do that and then that and then Minnie Mouse what, what are you what are you doing? Um, so this is Minnie Mouse. And uh, Minnie Mouse, did, did you have anything that you needed to, to say? Oh, oh, wait here. <laughs> Minnie Mouse is slapping me for reasons. Um, probably because I deserved it. So, uh, we're gonna put those things in there. Thank you. <laughs> now, so we need to take the gun out. And then the whole head assembly comes off. And we're gonna rotate the little beast heads upside down. Which actually now they're gonna be right side up. And we're gonna face them forward just like that. And I really like that. Okay, that, that looks cool. You know, having the beast heads forward. And then his combiner peg will come out right there. And once again, oh, oh we're also going to take his lower legs and we're going to snap them up into here. Um, there's sort of a, a divot thing there, but I don't know what, what you're supposed to do with it because it doesn't really line up with anything. So, yeah, we're going to take these and do that and then we'll take the other combiner foot and we'll put this foot on him and do that there there we go so we have another foot cutthroat becomes an arm i mean in combiner wars any of the Combiner Wars appendages can be used as an arm or a leg, but some of them make better arms than legs, and some of them make better legs than arms. And so, you know, usually when you find the configuration that you like best, then that's that's what you do. And, and so this is my this is my preference. Um. So. We're going to pull his legs back apart as though we're going into robot mode. And then we're going to snap them together. 
and we're also going to make sure the tail goes together and then fold the tail up against the back like that. The arms, so you see how the arms are down by the side. You don't leave them that way. You're gonna pull them out like this. You're going to bend at the elbow and then you're going to face them towards the front of the robot body. And now, so there's these little car, do you see that little rectangular hole right there? Well, there's this little rectangular post right there at his elbow and that is going to engage right here like that and that's going to lock the arm in and we're going to do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to take the bird head and actually the whole head assembly both heads are just going to go down like this and then we can have the bird head face down and then we'll pull out the combiner port and now we're going to extend the wings and fold them up like this now once again there's this this little rectangular thing here and then there's a little rectangular post here and see when i'm transforming transformers you know i i, I don't look at the instructions at, at least not until after i've played with them for a while and then i look at the instructions to see if i missed anything but that's how i figure out how to transform them i look for the the uh posts and the pegs and the conspicuous shapes that have to interconnect so that things nest and, and that's that's how i problem solve it and for me that's part of the fun you know the the whole puzzle aspect you know can you figure it out so yeah his his head is down like that he's got his wings down and then we're going to rotate the waist and and actually here we're going to rotate the waist like that and give him an elbow, you know, give the robot mode or the, the combined mode an elbow joint. And then with the, the bird legs, we're going to just put them that way and then do that until, you know, you kind of have a flat thing there. And so this is going to be an arm. And I will once again, since we're showing the original, the original way that he, that he combines, we're going to take the prime armor and turn it into a fist and see when you're going to make a fist since you know i mean human fist has one thumb i guess you could give him two thumbs but i always like to rotate one of the thumbs up so that it just looks like he only has one thumb and then you pull out pull out the little peg right there and you put that in the hole And so he is now an arm. Looks good as an arm. That's a good arm. Oh, I, I, I forgot to take uh, Center Twin's gun and put it somewhere. So I'm gonna put it on the side there. He's got a shoulder joint right there. And now we get to, to uh, Ripper Snapper. We'll take the gun off of his head. We're going to pull that back we're gonna have the robot face face forward before we rotate the whole chest around to reveal the combiner port we're gonna fold actually we're gonna point these things out I like them out and this is gonna face this way because you know he's got to have his arms like that uh, once again little square tab little rectangular hole so we can do one of these things just like that and then we'll rotate the claws so that they're like that do the same thing on the other side and there it is there it is and then we're going to take the head and it's just like when he's in robot mode you just put that like that um oh wait before i do that let's open up the legs like that just as though we are transforming him into a robot but we're not going to separate them we're going to leave them together and then close them back fold up the the creature legs they've got this little post here and then there's a little hole that allows that to just kind of seed into place 
And so you need to remember which arm you've already done. So we've done this arm. So now we need to rotate the waist here this way. And then the tail is going to go in like that, just like that. And we'll create another robot fist. So we have a robot fist here and that just pegs right into the hole at the bottom of the feet there. And then we put the head into place and there we go. So that, that is an arm. And now we got hunger. We're gonna take the big guns off. And so with this, we're going to open up the creature claws and extend, extend the fist out like this. And then you do that. That's not great. I'm just going to say that's not great. It said um, it's, it's probably one of the biggest sins, which is not that big, honestly. The, we're going to pull at this fin right in the middle, and that is going to pull out Abominus's head. We're going to close the dragon mouths. We're going to fold them into the legs like this. We're going to rotate both of the dragon necks sideways and then pull them down like this. Now, you can see that there are a couple tabs here, on here and here there are some notches in the side of this sort of neck-like thing. And so you put it together like that so that it all goes together. And then there's these little tabs here and they engage with these little holes right here. And they lock in really nicely. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now we're going to take the creature feet up here and now this big bunch of kibble that really didn't do anything in the uh, in the creature mode, it opens up and it's going to close against this like that. Now we're going to take the tail, we're going to close it against the back, and I have to say, oh wait here, uh, also there are, so you have Abominus's antennae, and they go up like that. Now this, this is probably the best combiner body that they have done in the Combiner Wars series. The legs are nice and solid. He, you know, the, the, the whole thing is just nice and solid and it looks great. And for the sacrifice of having a little bit of kibble underneath the belly of the dragon, he really does look amazing. So let's put them together. Form feet and legs. Form arms and body. Ready to form Voltron. Activate interlock. Dynatherms connected. Infracell up! Mega thrusters are go! Go! Voltron Force! Let's just take a look at that. Uh, I gotta move my my stands out of the way. Look at that! Look at that! He looks great! He really does look great! Yeah, his, his feet are kind of awkward and his hands look a little bit like boxing gloves, but what a good combined form. Let's see if I can focus in on him a little bit more.
There we go. Let's take that all in. So, he really does just... He's an amazing combiner. And... Left like this... Worth, worth the money. Uh, very, very happy. Now, I guess you could have these these feet flipped around this way, uh, if you like that better. But here's the thing. He is really, really good. He really is. I mean, you know, let's let's just side by side comparison. You know, <laughs> uh, in every way, he is superior to the Gen One. Uh, the Gen he would not exist without the Gen 1, so, you know, still giving you love, and I still love my original Gen 1 Abominus, but this one is fantastic. But what I will say is, like many of the Combiner Wars characters, you got these little tiny feet that just don't, they don't work with the rest of the design, which is why... You can get these upgrade kits. And now lately, they've been really hard to find. I, I've been looking online uh, just to get some more for some of my other combiners, and they seem to be sold out everywhere. I'm hoping that that's just because of supply shortages uh, due to COVID-19 and things like that. Uh, I hope that they're not just gone forever, but because uh, there's still some more that I'd like to get. So... You see these guns, uh, and, and well, you know, we have these guns like this. So you put these together, and then you put in the, uh, the, the things, you, put, you stick them together, and then you fold them around like this. And you click everything together, and now that is a foot. That is definitively a foot, and it even has an ankle joint. Same thing with this. Yeah, they're, 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 they're the same, except mirror images of each other. These are third-party accessories. These are not made by Hasbro, but they are really nicely done. Very high-quality things. So you got that. Uh, then you've got these, these guns here. Well, these are the hands, and watch what they do. So there's a lot of different ways that you can make these into guns, but you spread out all of these bits and then you fold it right here and look at that. That's a hand. It's a hand with an articulated thumb. Looks fantastic. You know, individual fingers. So good. So good. I mean, just you, you compare this to... Here, it's just side-by-side -side comparison. Um, it's no contest. You know, this, this is just a much cooler looking hand. So uh, we'll do, we'll pull these out, pull these out. And you saw that I can use these accessories in all of, in both modes, in the creature modes, in the robot modes. So while, yeah, you know, we're having to, I'm actually adding more parts, which normally I don't like extra parts, but I have to say these extra parts add a lot and they work well, whether they're in creature mode or in robot mode. And let's just go ahead and add this leg here. So we'll, we'll put that foot on there. And then I'm going to take off the little Combiner Wars foot and I'm going to put on... It's a lot harder to add these parts when he's already assembled. But there we go. So we got, got that. And then I'm going to pull off this fist and I'm gonna put on and see this is a hand you know whereas the the old thing I mean, it, it's a fist this is an actual hand and wait here 
we got we got the other one I'm gonna put that on now that looks really good I added a couple little holes in the back here so that you can take his guns and plug them in like that so it does that but wait but wait there's more because if you remember I was still using the feet you know I wasn't using the prime the prime armor anymore but I was using the feet on cutthroat well I have a place for those too so we take the legs we rotate them like this and then we'll rotate the lower legs to face forward again and now since these pegs are already here I can put this right here like that and put this here like that and now look at him let's go to the other camera you, you need to see this <laughs> that is awesome I'm gonna try and focus in Look at that. He looks so good. Oh, oh wait, here, let me. I, I left a post up there. Now he can put his feet down. He is truly just this beautiful monstrosity. And for the first time, I feel like Abominus could at least stand toe to toe with Volcanicus. that yeah just look at that look at that they're so good oh my gosh they're so good this is such an awesome toy i i have i've had this discussion with don uh and and don says oh i don't know about the big feet i'm everybody's entitled to their own opinion but in this case i'm sorry don you're wrong this is so much better. It is so much better. The, uh, I got the uh, kits, you know, a lot of times you can find them, when you can find them, you can find them on sale for about 30 bucks, depending on what other things they come with, sometimes as low as 25. And they're very high quality parts, very nicely machined. Um, they're, you know, the, the molds are great, the colors are great. And look at what it does for him. It just, it takes him from being a 10 to an 11. You know, that's it. Um, you know what? It just so happens, Kyoji. It just so happens that he does have Computron to fight. Because, uh... I, I got the box set for comp Computron. Oh, I forgot to put cut, Cutthroat's gun on. Here, wait, let me, let me do this. So, here we go. Yeah, we have Computron. And, oh, 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 don't, don't pitch forward. Don't pitch forward. Wait here. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having a little bit of a crisis here. Okay, don't, there we go. Okay, so. So we've got Computron here. Oh, oh, here that goes there. Uh, Computron does not have an upgrade kit. And to be honest, I don't feel like he needs one because as a box set, he came with, with his own custom molded fists. They are not the Combiner Wars fists. And look, he has real feet actual feet he looks great uh he came with uh with uh scrounge 
who is based off of a Marvel character that uh, that was teamed up with Blaster and got killed in the comic, and uh, and he turned into a wheel. You know, in in the ways that a lot of the Marvel characters that weren't actual Transformers, they they didn't look the same and they didn't they didn't really look like they fit in with the rest. He turned into a wheel, so they recolored Cosmos, so he's still got his sort of wheel origins, except he's done in the scrounge colors. And then I decided to add Cosmos to the team because I thought, hey, you know what? If Scrounge can be a team in the team. Uh, so can uh, so can Cosmos and Cosmos came with this little mini con and Scrounge came with this little mini con so I added them to the team so yeah Computron looks great as well and uh, yes the Terracons can can fight it out with Computron so yeah we have Computron and we will talk about Computron at some point in the future, too. So, nonetheless, that is... Oh, here, Heather. There we go. Let's put them on the table, if, if there's enough room on the table. <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, can, can you get in there? Can you get in there, Computron? Maybe, maybe. Let, let, move, move over, Abominus. There, there we go. And let's get him into a, a little bit of a pose here. There we go. So there you go. Abominus, Gen 1 Abominus, combine, er, er, uh, Power of the Primes Abominus with the upgrade kits, Computron. We have gone three hours and 16 minutes. That's insane. That is insane. But boy, we had a lot of characters to go through. I I'm kind of sorry that it went so long. I, I hope I didn't bore everybody. But nonetheless, that is the Terracons. And I love these sets. And I love my Power of the Primes Abominus. And, uh, and actually, I'm planning on getting a... Uh, getting a bombshell a combiner wars bombshell because if if you remember the insecticons live stream combiner wars bombshell has an undocumented gun mode so i'm going to get a second one repaint it as the deluxe insecticon barrage and then make him part of my terracons team and that's going to be cool but i don't have them yet so i can't do it so that's it uh, thank you, thank you so much everyone for joining me again, and once again, uh, next week, the, the link is going to take you to Retro Robot, and it's, and I think that it's going to be great. Please, please, please join us, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell, because that way, when when I do something, you will be guaranteed to be notified that, that we're having a live stream or that we've posted a new video, or even if I post a message or something, you will get it. So if you actually want to know what's going on, click the notification bell, click the subscribe button. Uh, thumbs ups are helpful to the channel. I, I, I like thumbs ups. Uh, actually, the algorithm likes thumbs up. I like them too. Uh, we also have an Instagram, and 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 Monica has been using the Instagram. She's actually good at social networking. I I I, I do YouTube. That that that's the only social networking that I do. So uh, yes, um, so oh cheeky cheeky boy, uh, thank you for for waking up and seeing the end. And you know this time we had some stuff at the end. It wasn't like he shows up late and then only sees the last five minutes. So. I guess that's the advantage to going really, really long. So, uh, Retrobot next week. It's going to be Retrobot. And and then I'll have to move the other live streams over into Retrobot. And all the views are going to disappear. Just so you know, all the views, all the likes. And, and I think that the chat information is going to disappear when I move it too, which sucks. Because I feel like the chat is what makes these things interesting. You know, I, I rewatch all these and I watch all of the comments 
and and see the stuff that I missed because my face was buried in a transformer. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit sad that all the previous live streams are going to lose their data when they transfer over. But we're going to make new data. So come with us and let's all make new data. And uh, with that being said, I, 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 I kind of feel like like that's that's the end of it that that we did it we did all of the abominus the abominus i and, and and thank you everyone thank you kyoji thank you colleen thank you cheeky cheeky boy uh th thank you let's see uh jo is jonah still here did we lose jonah if you're still here, Jonah, and if you're still here, um, Kyoji, obviously Kyoji, and Nature View, and Joy, especially Joy. Oh my gosh, you've been here since before we even started. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, you know, the, you guys make it, make it all worthwhile. And, and that's part of the reason why we're doing the new channel, because we want to make this a good experience for everybody. And we, and if we want to make it a good experience, we got to do it right. And if we're going to do it right, that means fresh start with a dedicated channel for just this kind of content. So, uh, that being said, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful weekend, stay safe out there.